everybody welcome to the science history okay so in tonight's video i want to try and explain as best i can how to understand analog synthesizers and how to program them so you can program sounds that you want to i'm using the studio logic sledge because Everything is a knob per function, so there's no hidden menus or anything. Not in this side of it, anyway, not in the analog side. The only hidden functions are the arpeggiator and stuff like that, which is neither here nor there. For this tutorial, we will not be using the wavetable synthesizer section because it does wavetable synthesizers uh, synthesis as well. We're just going to be concentrating on analog synthesizers. Okay, so this particular patch. <laughs> is all analog now this is a virtual analog synth it's basically digital but it does what a, an analog synth does it's the same thing if you understand this video you'll understand how to go to a synth on your ipad or your desktop as long as it's an analog or virtual analog and you'll be able to get going with that synthesizer so i'll explain everything what it all does uh, what, what 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 it means to uh, do certain things like with the lfos the filters hopefully hopefully uh some people will find this interesting now i know that most people on this chat hi Stephen. hi wall hi dean hello joe hi audible hi colin uh hi ivan uh anyone else wall anyone else who may be watching most of you probably know all this stuff but uh, hopefully the people watch this video later they'll get some uh, useful stuff out of it so the very first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set this back on the panel to an initialized state that means just one oscillator doing a a sawtooth waveform which is what most analog synths will uh, initialize to if they're virtual uh, and what where you really want to be starting from to understand what's going on so we have three oscillators here these are your oscillators and these are the things that make the noise then we have a mix between the oscillators and then we have a noise generator and then we have a filter. So how it works is it goes from the oscillators, the things that make the noise, into the filter, into the filter envelope, from the filter envelope into the amplitude envelope, which is how the sound changes over time. We'll get to that. And then into effects, if your synth has any effects. If not, you can always just plug some effects in or use AUV3s or desktop VSTs and stuff like that. Anyway. Here we go. So the point of this is really for beginners to understand analog synthesizers. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back to an initialized patch. OK, and if you follow along, you'll be able to do this with any uh, uh, and any analog synth you've got. Now, this has got three oscillators. Some have two, some have more, you know it doesn't it doesn't really matter it's the same thing we're going to use oscillator 2 to start with and i'm using oscillator 2 is because oscillator 1 does include a wavetable and the this knob here controls the different wavetables in the wavetable section so we don't need to be worrying about that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to use oscillator 2 and set that to initialize patch but i'm going to set the entire machine back to an initialized state as well so at the moment we have the mix of the three oscillators they are on full there is no noise if i was to switch it on you'd hear noise when we turn that off first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set the filter so i'm going to turn this drive control down which is like a distortion drive filter that happens to be on the actual sledge we don't necessarily need that key track i'm going to make sure is basically in the center we'll get to what all of this does resonance i'm going to turn all the way to the left and the filter cut off all the way to the right i'm going to leave it on 24 db you will probably have 24 db or 12 db slope filters on your synthesizer okay i'm going to leave it on a low pass filter okay so you've got low pass high pass and band pass on the sledge the filter envelope here i'm going to set the attack to zero the decay to zero the de sustain to maximum and the release to zero the amount i'm going to set in the middle this is the amount of um effect the filter envelope will have on the sound so at the moment with that set in the middle it will have zero effect whatsoever the velocity is kind of self-explanatory one veloc so i'm going to set that to zero 
the envelope here i'm going to set the attack to zero the decay to zero the sustain to full and the release to zero i'm going to turn off the effects so there's no effect i'm going to set all the three oscillators to a sawtooth wave like that and i'm going to make sure that they are all on eight, eight foot and before i go any further on the sledge this is the octaves so they've done it in the way pipe organs used to be displayed like one inch uh one foot two foot three uh, four foot so on and so forth so the higher the, the footage the higher the sound so i'm going to set them all to eight foot i'm going to turn off the mix for one and three so now all we are hearing is oscillator two i'm going to make sure that the lfo is set to no depth at all but it's only going to oscillator one at the moment we'll get to modulation in a moment so you see if i press the key we're getting modulation it's, it on the sledge the after touch which is when you press a key harder is connected to the mod wheel so if i just hold the key and push the mod wheel up we're going to get that so i'm going to push this mod wheel up hold the key go into where it says wheel now this is where your modulation you can go into modulation routines on your synth you'll be able to find them you'll see that it is modulating oscillators one two and three and on a sine wave so if i speed that up i'm going to take the depth to zero so we got plus and minus so negative positive and zero and now we are basically on just a basic way uh, sawtooth waveform nothing spectacular so learn to set your synth back to initial and, and even if we choose other oscillators now they will be exactly the same now I am also going to set my detune back to zero for all of these waves that we don't need to worry about and also make sure that our semitones are in the middle as well so at the moment we're just using oscillator two that's that's all we're, we're gonna need for the beginning part okay the different shapes are how the sound sounds so sawtooth wave and we're polyphonic by the way it's a poly synth so i'm gonna sec we're listening to oscillator three i'm gonna go back to oscillator two so you can hear the difference in tone so that's a sawtooth wave square wave triangle sine and this one this is pulse width okay not pulse width modulation that's that's here pulse width modulation is when you modulate the pulse width with an lfo which we'll get into in a sec so that's pulse width so if we control use this if this is set in the middle it's going to be more or less a square wave And what we're doing is we're moving that wave uh, through through a frequency range so that's pulse width pulse width modulation is something different pulse width modulation is when we set one of the low frequency oscillators to modulate this to move this like this that's pulse width modulation we'll get into that when i cover modulation okay so next thing is the filter that so 24 db or 12 db you can hear the difference when you set the filter going so next thing we're going to do is move over from our oscillator section into our filter section so you can hear what's going on there so if i hold the note here 
and close the filter frequency down. It's, it's kind of like a, like a tone control, so. So next to that, you'll see resonance. If the filter is all the way open, the resonance won't have any effect, okay? You will only start to hear the resonance as I close the filter. So if I close the filter, say, halfway, and I start to bring the resonance up, what's that, what that's doing is at the point of the cutoff, so wherever this is set, and I bring the resonance up, what that does is push the resonance peak at the point of the cutoff. It pushes it up and causes it to resonate. So if I set the resonance there and move this, you'll hear the resonance change. Unless I open the filter all the way, then you will not hear the resonance. Key track, again, is related to the cutoff. So with the key track in the middle, if I turn this key track all the way up, you'll hear nothing because the filter is completely open. If we close the filter a little bit, set the key track back here, and what, listen to what happens. If I hold this about here, you see how it's get right. Like maybe hear it a little bit more there. You'll see how this gets brighter if I turn the key track to the left, and it'll get darker if I turn the key track to the right. So at the very top end here, if I turn this key track, you'll hear it get brighter. And as I move down the keyboard, it will get darker. So if we go the other way and make it brighter at the bottom end, it will get darker as we move up. To the point where you can't really hear it unless We make some adjustments. So, there's your filtering and key tracking. The drive on this is kind of exclusive to the sledge. It's just one of those controls that they put in for overdriving the filter. Can't really hear it unless you apply some filter. Now the filter envelope here below Below, this is how the filter reacts over time. Okay, so it, it, it's a bit like the ADSR envelope on how the sound reacts over time. So let's do the sound over time first. Okay, so the attack is how fast this is gonna fade in as we hit the note. So if we go So quite high attack, very high attack, will take a long time for the note to fade in. The decay is how long it will take to the sound to decay once it reaches the attack point. The sustain is how long it will sustain, so it, fully open it will just sustain forever, as long as I'm holding the key. The release is how long the sound will carry on for after I take my hand off the key. Like this. So using that principle, 
if we take the sustain all the way off and start to bring the decay up so there's no sustain now so and it doesn't it won't matter where you have the release because there's really basically no sound getting through at all so let's take the sustain if we hold So what will happen is we take the decay up and keep the note on. Now we're getting into the realms of how pianos react. If we want we can now start to play with let's right let's do this let's do the filtered envelope next before we move on to anything else so we've got this sound okay we need some cutoff for the filter envelope to work you can do what you like you can have the amount full here you can have this here that that it won't do anything unless you have something for the filter envelope to do okay so again we'll set it exactly the same We'll just set it, no attack, no decay, full sustain, and no release. Let's take the filter cutoff down now. In fact, just for the purposes of this, let's bring our sustain up so the note sustains a little bit. So it's going to go, come back down to its decay point to where the sustain point is. So it looks like, it's kind of like that shape. And let's take our cutoff back and take the amount on this up. And it's going to be more or less the same because we've got nothing going on really with the uh, filter envelope. So now. This is how the filter is opening and closing over time. So very fast. Hear that now? And because these are set more or less the same, it's going to go up, it's going to open the filter, and then it's going to close it again to the sustain point. But if we wanted that to be quicker, so longer to open, and quicker to close. See what happens? So it's opening slowly, and then closing quickly, you can hear that now. See? So again, you could go the opposite way. Very fast attack, slow decay. So already we've got uh, quite quite a good there. Uh, one fill using just one oscillator. Bit of filtering. It's always a good idea as well to have your kind of release for your filter envelope and amp envelope set, set more or less the same. Now it's almost beginning to sound like a kind of a whirlitzer.
already used one uh, one oscillator. So this is the this is the kind of cool thing we can do with just one oscillator. And then of course we we can change the So what let's bring in uh, another oscillator. Okay, so let's bring in oscillator 3 and let's set oscillator 3 also on a pulse wave. Now they're all going to share the same filtering, so that's cool. We have semitones now, or detune on both of these, so we can detune it. And if we detune oscillator three, we're going to kind of get a chorus in effect. So you'll be able to do this on yes, because if you've got at least two oscillators, you will have a detune and probably in semitones as well. So if we detune this now, you'll get this lovely chorus in effect. To remember this play around with the filtering and the filter envelope but the amount is important you'll have an amount knob which is the, the or the de it might say depth is the amount of uh the amount that you're going to send amount of filtering that you're going to send to the filter envelope that's important and you can get some great sounds just by doing that And now if you wanted to, you could, although that is actually fine for the for the sound. If you've got some reverb effects on your synth, you can add some, maybe you can add some reverb. better for things like pianos is if you've got a chorus so let's say any effects off for the sec now remember we're using um, the uh, pulse wave here on two and also but we're gonna open up this filter a little bit let's just turn off this one and let me explain a little bit about modulation so this Let's open up the sustain so we can hear it properly. So we're going to sustain the sound. And we're also going to open up the filter a little bit. So you can hear the sound a bit more. And I'm going to drop it one octave. That's the pulse width, and I'm moving this by hand, which is basically pulse width modulation. Here's where you can use your LFO. Choose LFO one. Now, your synth will have at least one LFO, probably two. Some of them even have three and four, which, which can get crazy, so you can modulate pretty much everything. Oh, thanks, Sam. Thank you very much. Bless you. On your modulation section, your LFO, you want to be looking for, like, say, LFO1. And then you'll have shape. So this is the type of 
shape that that LFO is going to be running. Now, an LFO is a low-frequency oscillator. It's just an oscillator you can't hear, but it affects other oscillators. Some LFOs will speed up so fast that you can hear them, but... So we want our sound, when I play this keyboard, we want our sound to go... Like that, controlled by the LFO. So sine wave is going to do that. It's going to give us that slow kind of thing like this. The destination, this is where we're going to send our LFO shape to the pulse width. Okay, now you will have a list of what's available. There's not that many destinations. Here we have oscillator 1, oscillator 2, all three oscillators, oscillators 2 and 3 or oscillator 3. We can't modulate oscillator 2 on its own. doesn't really matter because we want the next one, which is PWM, which is pulse width modulation. Unless we are using the wavetable here, which is like going up to there, unless we are using the wavetable, let me get that back to Sawtooth, then we, we can modulate this, okay? Well, we can actually modulate that, which sweeps through the wave. We're not even, at the moment, we're not even using this. We've got it turned, not in fact, I'll turn it off. We're only using oscillator two. Now you can still hear nothing, although I've got my sine wave and my destination here. This is where the depth comes in. So full depth now, that's, that's sending that knob nuts. The speed is key. Say for instance now, I want to use my modulation, my my pitch bend wheel here. You can't see it, it's just off screen here, but the, you know, the mod wheel. Not pitch bend wheel, is this. But the mod wheel, or the after touch on this, to cause, to make vibrato, okay? Which is, which is one of the most commonly used uh, ass assignments for the modulation wheel, so, so it, you, you get the vibrato. So I'm going to choose wheel here because we have three modulation sources. We have our mod wheel or after touch, and then we have LFO one and LF two, and they're independent. You'll see that we can modulate the three oscillators together, and we can use uh, any anything. We can use a ramp, sample, and hold. Ramp is cool, but not all synthesizers have a ramp option for the shape. But we're going to use this, and again with depth. I'm going to push the mod wheel up. You don't need to go nuts with a mod wheel. So this is my mod wheel is fully open now. And if I close the mod wheel. And then I push the mod wheel up. Or I use the after touch, which is the same thing. Okay, so that that's 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 kind of a piano y kind of sound, if you like, if you that that kind of vibe. Let's reset it again. Do something else. So again, it's easy to reset. You need the key thing is um, learning to reset your synth uh, pretty quickly uh, will help you to learn how to program it as well. 
So um, let's run these up. Let's use all three. Make sure. So this time we'll use all three and we'll make a kind of cool um, pad type sound or maybe a lead. Yeah, let's make a lead, but we'll keep it poly. There is a mono switch here. We can have it in mono if we want, but we'll keep it. But we'll use all three oscillators. Okay, so this first oscillator now, which is, we're all fully up. But we're now basically back to our initial sound and if we hit panel we should know yeah so that the panel is reflecting what's actually programmed now so let's take this down and let's make this into a square wave I'm going to leave this on um, sawtooth and I will put this on a sign and detune it slightly and then detune this as well. Go to the filter, start messing around with that. Now we'll use a 12 dB. Some resonance. some glide so I think I'll use pulse width on this one some chorus you see set the mod wheel for modulation for oscillators one two and three Set the key track so it's darker at the bottom. a little bit better we put a little bit of noise in as well but white So 
now we've got a half decent lead sound but I'm just now changing if we just change them all to sawtooth you can completely change up the sound now you might if you want like that classic uh, fifth detuned lead class use loads in progs all you need to do is detune one of the oscillators using the semitones and just move up seven semitones so we can if we use number three let's take that down We've tuned that up seven semitones, so if we bring the others back in now. Okay, so let's make a, I don't know, let's make a classic string machine sound. Okay, so let's go to a, let's find a, an initialized patch on my patch thing here. So, here. so this, if I do the panel, but we don't want that, we're just going to use initialize patch so I'm gonna initialize that again here we go so I'm gonna start with we'll have uh, pulse width for all three I'm gonna slightly detune them So, yeah, we're in a ballpark, which is good. I'm doing the amp envelope first. around this 
Where this will really work is when we put a phaser on it. That's kind of that, that that kind of thing. Funnily enough, again, if we just by changing a few settings. Nice droney. It's just a, another initial sound so another one as well so you don't like I said it's <laughs> once you understand it the very simple uh, work the way these work they all work the same the analog synthy especially the old ones you can get these to do quite I mean there's this a string sound that I made earlier to say I use the pulse wave, sawtooth pulse, all three oscillators are in. And then here's one I may call slow brass. And then one called hall brass. <laughs> which relies heavily on a lot going on with the filter.
most of the synths, especially the virtual analogs, of course, will have loads and loads of presets. Presets are also a good place to start. Like, um, but here's another modulation thing that I did with this pulse ramp thing. So you'll see that the, the shape uh, is called ramp and it's going to just oscillator one. So if I switch off oscillators two and three, I've tuned it to go up a couple of octaves. Uh, if I hit run the sustain a bit more, you'll hear it better. But if I'm just on oscillator one and I've got my modulation going on, you can tune it here with the depth. go to that point and if I bring in my other two oscillators back I get this very strange effect we can set it faster so it's more of a and if I set it to all three the destination have it slower it sends all three oscillators up or if we just set this to open the it will open the filter Guys, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I hope, I really hope that uh, some people who, who, because uh, I know most of you know about synthesizers, so I, I, I really hope that some of you found some of this useful because they are really are all the same. They, they have to be the same because that's the way analog synths work. You know, you'll get some things that'll have different things, maybe more modulation, more LFOs maybe a couple more oscillators maybe less oscillators maybe some effects built in that kind of thing but the basic principles will be exactly the same and that's how they work so anyway thank you very 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 much for joining me this evening it's still time to super chat me in uh, and help support me and joe uh, that would be very very kind as well but anyway it doesn't matter it's no it's not a problem <laughs> Going through a few patches. All of these I programmed. This is using the wavetable. to sit and program the sledge. 
thanks Audible, bless you. Now I have no out, out clue how to program FM or Wavetable. Wavetable's not so bad. Wavetables more just instead of using oscillators you're using wavetables it's kind of the same principle anyway bless you all thank you very very much i'll let you say tara to each other for a few minutes and i will see you all tomorrow now tomorrow i do have a I, on wednesday we're doing mood synth for a new sound pack for that from uh sam israel so sounds uh, sound of israel um which is very cool and I think we're doing FAC drum kit and synth master 2 in AUM tomorrow with Atom which has been doing some very cool stuff with that anyway uh yeah I think that's what I'm doing tomorrow evening anyway guys bless you all hope you enjoy the rest of your day evening afternoon morning wherever you are in the world and I will see you all tomorrow yes top job you ever going to do DS2? Uh, I'll, I'll get around to it eventually, well. Um, yeah, no doubt. Anyway, brilliant. See you guys later. ta -da. Thank you.